All right. Uh, so, uh, hi guys. Uh, this is uh, Vinod Manamala, and uh, I'll be doing this demo with my colleagues Jose Leviahuri and uh, Shweta Kota. Um, so uh, we are really excited about this uh, Tipcon OSTU collaboration, and uh, we are we are actually uh, working towards this effort, and we released a lot of uh, offerings uh, for the Tipco Spot Fair. So in this case, uh, we have uh, a complete set of tools for. Uh, we have a complete set of tools for the Tipco Spot Fire, you know, which handles everything from authentication, uh, and to data handling to data visualization against this OSU platform. And uh, for the detailed offerings and how to download most of the uh, offerings and make them work in a Spot Fire client, uh, you can just follow this link and this link to. Uh, get most of the details regarding this. The the first offering that uh, we are excited about is the uh, custom OSDU connector for Spotfire. So the custom connector here allows the uh, user to authenticate interactively with the OSDU platform using the Open ID in the OR 2.0. So what this connector does is actually uh, it it authenticates against the OSD platform that you're working on, and it brings back the service endpoint as a spot for a data table data table that as you can see here. So currently we support uh, four cloud providers: uh, GCP, Azure, AWS, and IBM. The current release uh, supports only the GCP, Azure, and AWS, and IBM would be part of the next release. And uh, so uh, if you need to understand more about this uh, custom OSDU connector, uh, you can click on this link here and this uh, PPT will be sharing after this presentation. Um, the, I'll be showing a demo, uh, so which should be explaining uh, how our, most of our offerings would be working uh, within the Spotify client. Uh, the second uh, offering would be a custom OSDU dashboard for the Spotify. Um, so what this dashboard does is uh, it makes use of all the uh, service endpoint that you get from the OSU connector, and it uh, and it allows you to create uh, you know uh, Python data functions. Uh, Python data function is um, is is a method uh, for calling you know. Uh, uh, calling Python from within the Spotify client. So it allows the Spotify users to interactively call uh, Python to the Spotify client uh, to greatly enhance your uh, visual experience and analytics within the Spotify. Uh, now, going back to the demo. So, um, the first step is to download the uh, custom visualization dashboard. Uh, uh, from the link that I just showed you, and once you uh, download it to your local machine, you can just open your Spotify client and choose to open the dashboard. And the first step would be to authenticate. As you can see, that this is the OSTU custom OSTU Spotify connector. And as I, like I said, uh, we currently support uh, GCP, Azure, and AWS. And the next version would be also supporting IBM. Um, uh, for this demo purpose, uh, we would be just authenticating against Amazon, like AWS. And uh, as you can see that here uh, within the setup, uh, we have the uh, you know luxury to add all the service endpoints and authentication oh. details that you need to be. Uh, I'm, so, I'm sorry, Vinod, can you hear me? Yeah. Uh, we we see the slide, the presentation. We don't see the the actual. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah. Can you see this now? Now, yes. Okay, perfect. Sorry, guys. So, uh, yeah. So, once you open the custom dashboard, uh, the first step would be like uh, the dashboard would uh, prompt you to authenticate against the cloud vendor that you want to work with. So, as you can see here, that we currently support GCP, Azure, and AWS. And uh, going forward with the next release, we'd be supporting IBM. Uh, so when you click on the setup, uh, you know uh, you can uh, greatly see the uh, service endpoint that you need to add part as part of the authentication process, and uh, these are the endpoints that we'd be working with today. So once you click on uh, sign in with AWS, it would actually take you to the browser for authentication purposes. And once you click sign in, it'll do all the authentication, and once the authentication is done, it'll bring you back to the dashboard. 
So this uh, custom dashboard is already pre-built uh, with uh, tables and images and graphs. Uh, so this is just an example, uh, but this can be made into a much more bigger dashboard based on user requirements. Uh, this is just for uh, demoing purposes. So this is just an example, just so you know. Uh, so the first step here, uh, uh, it's more like a step-by-step -step process to access the data. And if you just follow these steps, you'd be able to understand what is happening within this dashboard. Uh, before we get into the uh, actual demo uh, within the dashboard, let's let's talk about the Python data function. So so the Python data function, like I said, um, uh, so it's 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 more of a method for calling languages such as Python, you know, R, and we even support MATLAB. And uh, this, like I said, this allows the Spotify users to interactively call Python code from within the Spotify client. And, you know, and uh, you can do much more. In this case, like we are bringing uh, information regarding the well, well bore, and we are getting much more deeper into the work product components like, uh, you know, well logs and market data and LAS files and so on. So a simple uh, Python data function would look something like this. So you would have your entire script written here and uh, you'd provide your inputs. In this case, the inputs are from the table that we generated from the OSTU custom Spotify connector. Um, and we are bringing those uh, uh, authentication information and service endpoints in into this Python data function. And then we are outputting the results from the script as a data frame. And this data frame would show up in your Spotify dashboard as a Spotify table. So just so you know, uh, the result from the OSTU Spotify connector uh, would actually show up as a table. Uh, with all the service end endpoints. So in this case, uh, we are working with uh, AWS. So the provider would be AWS. Then you have your service uh, that you'd be using as part of the API calls in the uh, Python data function. And these are your service endpoints and your data partition and th then you would have your uh, token information things like access token and refresh token so um, uh, so let's now let's get into the demo itself uh, so there are like um, the first thing is to uh, talk about the refresh token right so we know that we're bringing back a refresh token as part of the uh, authentication process and you could click this to you know refresh your token in case your session gets expired and um, so uh, next is to follow step by step procedure to you know extract the information and in this case we are working with the tno data set so all this information that we bring back as part of the uh, tno data set so uh, the first step is to zoom in and zoom out. So this is an, um, you know, uh, a custom map uh, visualization that we built uh, for this, uh, you know, uh, OCU testing. So here we can just zoom in and zoom out to set up boundary. So this would be a boundary. And uh, in this case, we are trying to bring back all the wells within this boundary in the map region. So once you zoom in, zoom out, you can click here. So what happens is, uh, it will bring back all the wells within this uh, boundary. And as you can see that I already preloaded this map with the uh, well information from the TNO data set. And the second step would be to, uh, you know, choose the number of wells or set of wells that you want to work with. Uh, once you highlight that, what happens is another set of data function is invoked. And as you can see that the highlighted uh, maps are focused in this uh, uh, map selection. And you can see the selected wells and well bows in a matter of time. Uh, so the the uh, the performance of this dashboard depends on the volume of data that you're going to work with. So the more number of data is going to take a little more time to, you know, load the uh, information regarding that wells and well bows. So as you can see that I bought back uh, a number of wells and you can see their coordinates and you can see the well ID and well bow ID. So we, uh, the next step would be to uh, filter the wells. So in this case, I'm taking this table, I'm just creating a filter. So let's say that I wanna bring back uh, all the uh, work product component uh, regarding these wells. So I can just click here. And once I click here, you can see that I'm already populating uh, this table with all the well bores and the data sets that are associated with those uh, uh, well ID and well bore IDs. 
so the third step uh, or the final step would be to uh, just choose one of those uh, Velbo ID and their corresponding uh, files. So once you click on them, uh, you can see that um, my visual visualizations here uh, would automatically update uh, with those uh, information from the, uh, you know, from the data from the files, like the trajectory and the marker files and the well log files. Uh, just so you know that uh, uh, there's another third component called well log mods. So the uh, well log uh, mods are, uh, are the third offering and, and my colleague, right now, the colleague Jose Levy Ray will be talking more about the mods. Uh, this is a, you know, uh, inbuilt visualization within the spot where these visualizations will be replaced by the mods. And Jose will be talking more about the mods uh, after this demo. So, so the uh, the second page is about the volume dashboard. Uh, so we uh, we worked with uh, Debussy from uh, Debussy Strategy from Catalyst. Uh, we took their requirements and we built this uh, volume dashboard to just test out the, you know, uh, every version of OC. Here that uh, we are bringing. Um... Renat, your audio is gone quiet again. Oh, sorry. So we are bringing back uh, all the metadata regarding the uh, master data and the work product components. And as you can see that, uh, uh, we are bringing different kinds of master data within the TNR data set, and we're also bringing back all the different kinds of work product component within the work product component data. So once you bring back all this data, uh, you can then slice and dice, and also you can drill down into, you know, uh, minute levels of details uh, to see what's happening with your, uh, you know, OSG environment. So in this case, let's say that I want to drill in to see like uh, what uh, what this user has been doing and what kind of files he has uploaded and what he's working on. You can just click on uh, or you know slice it by this uh, username, and uh, you can also like uh, let's say you want to see what data is associated with Norway country. You can see uh, uh, that too, and you can also like uh, slice and dice by the organization. Uh, since this is a test data set, we don't have much information, but uh, we could ma make it much more intuitive once we have like you know proper data set. And uh, we can also uh, look into uh, the digital format that's been uploaded. For example, in this case, we're looking at, uh, uh, you know, the PDF files that, that have been uploaded. And you can also see the size of the PDF files that have been uploaded and when they have been uploaded. And uh, let's get back to the uh, presentation. Uh, there we go. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I'm gonna take it from there. My name is Jose Leviaguirre here from TIPCO. If you don't know how to pronounce my name, you just can call me Jose or Joe, if it's that easier. So what, what's um, Spotfire Mods? Spotfire Mods is a framework to extend Spotfire capabilities, in particular for creating custom visualizations that look and feel like native Spotfire charts. The mod concepts, comes from the gaming community short form is short for modification and it's uh, the process of altering one or more, more aspect of a video game to fit specific needs in the spotfire context developers can create sophisticated visualizations that can be used like native visualizations with no code required by the user they are simply to use by consumers uh, it's easy for programmers to code or develop and they are secure because they they have a trust mechanisms and digital signatures and they also run in a secure environment so with that um let's go to the next slide because i want to go into how you can download uh, spot format if you have any questions just feel free to put them so spot format like uh, any other visualization here i'm use, using this um, well lock mod by just dragging and dropping the visualization right there mods are, are, are available since version 11. so let's go to a, to the next slide so i can show you how how to get mods or how to use mod. once you download the mod you just drag and drop into your file like you will do with a file uh, or any other visualization and then you start configuring your your uh, your mod or your visualization this in particular has specific uh, uh, configuration options. So you can add tracks, unlimited number of tracks or unlimited numbers of curves in one track. And then you can 
do the shading. And once you're finished with your configuration, it's gonna look something like this. And we're gonna jump into the demo. You can see the tooltip for each line. It interacts just like any other visualization. You just drag, select, um, the marking, everything comes for free when, when, when it comes to coding. And finally, it, 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 you can save uh, the mod into your library by clicking uh, the, the, the three little dots and save it to the library. That's how you how you do it. So I'm going to share my screen now, and I'm going to show you how to uh, search for mods, use them, and then do a little demo. Okay, are you able to see my screen? Okay, I hope yes, so. Yeah, we can see. Perfect. You. Perfect. So I'm going to search for Spotfire mods. And then I'm going to skip the ads and go to Spotfire mods. Spotfire mods are available in the Tico Exchange. And here you can um, see what. You have, you have two minutes, Jose. You have the interesting impact, then you click, click on one of them. And then you will see a link. Oops. Uh, my internet. There we go. Then, then you have here the uh, you you click on releases. Then you click on download the zip file, and then you'll look at the mods like this. I already show you how to uh, how to use the mods. I'm gonna drag and drop one just for the their chart here. I need to have some data, and I uh, go to my flyout and save to my library. And it's always a to save your mods in into the mods folder, so everyone can use the mods the the mods in your organization. So for the well log mod, I'm going to give you a little bit of history. The well log it starts. It's open source and um, it was ported in JSV, which which was the earlier version. JavaScript based uh, version of that and um, some some uh, customers uh, created this but this is the data is not pivoted so it's it's, it's you're locked into only a couple of tracks uh, only two curves in, in one track and that's it so what we did is change the data that looks like this into a pivoted data on pivoted data where you have one category one value and then on the well log it's going to look like this, where you can just add more, more, more logs. For example, I want to copy this track. I just duplicate, and then I make my my modifications as I need it. And um, yeah, it just interacts with um, as you as you saw in the demo, interacts the 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 songs that you're interested in, and and so forth. That's it. That's all I have. Oh, fantastic. 